this history, or shall hear, or read, or see it. Pray to Jesus in his divinity to have pity on Richard of Haldingham and Lafford, who has made and planted, to whom joy in heaven be granted. everyone. Today we are going to talk about the Hereford Mepamundi. Now the Hereford Mepamundi is unique in Britain's heritage. Uh, it's an outstanding treasure of the medieval world. It records how 13th century scholars interpreted the world in spiritual as well as geographic terms. It's a map, but more like an interpretive map than a geographic map. The map of Mundi in real life is drawn on a single sheet of vellum or calf skin and it measures 64 inches by 52 inches tapering here toward the top with a rounded apex. The geographical material of the map is within this 52 inch diameter circle and it reflects very common map making thinking during the medieval period and through the church with Jerusalem at the center of the world. And actually on the map of Monday you can see a pinhole right in the center of that circle where the map maker most likely put some sort of compass tool and connected with a piece of wood or twine crafted his perfect circle. This single sheet of vellum came from a calf that was most likely born and bred specifically for the purpose of becoming this map. You can even see a small tick mark where the calf was bitten. Now, in designing the map, first the circle was drawn, and then the continents were put in. Typical at the time, the map can be split into a cross-cut, kind of like a T the top half being Asia, the bottom left being Europe, and the right being Africa. Then the artist would come in and put the seas and the rivers. After that, the animals and the beasts were added, and then the cities. were all in, the scribe would come and start on the text, which is very difficult and time-consuming, squeezing what would be included in its corresponding position. After this, the illuminator would start putting in the gilded, illuminated letters with gold. And originally, this whole map would have been very vibrantly colored. It would have been a center of religious, educational, and tourist interest for the area. It truly would have been an attraction and source of income for the cathedral. It was painted with gold, bright red lettering, and green and blue seas. An interesting 
interesting point here is that in medieval times, the, the blue was of great importance, and most often blue was made from azurite, which um, at the time was a pretty common for blue, but still rare and, and labor-intensive, made from copper material. Even more rare and highly revered blue was made from lapis lazuli, which was created from deep blue semi-precious stone only available in Afghanistan. And what's really interesting is the words of Christ here at the top actually appear in blue, and it is very likely that they were made from that more precious blue. Now, most obvious is the cartography of the map of Mundi. East is actually found at the top, as this orientation represented the rising of the sun and the second coming of Christ. The world is laid out in a circle because of its Christian framework. Jerusalem sits at the center of the known world. It's a really common theme in medieval map making. The continents included are Asia, Africa, Europe, and the Mediterranean. There's approximately 420 towns and cities from the day that are represented on the map, such as Rome, Paris, and Hereford, as well as oceans and other important landmarks. The British Isles are represented much larger than in reality. This is most likely the case because it was produced there. Also, you have to note all the city, town, even building detail that they've crammed into the British Isles here. This particular area here shows the city of Lincoln significantly larger in scale equal to even London. Uh, the depiction of Lincoln Cathedral on the map is, is also very true to life. Uh, Lincoln was already a renowned center of learning in the 13th century. And that's why many believe that, um, that this map originated there in Lincoln. Hereford does appear on the map, but seems like it was added after the map was created. But it appears that the original scribe that created the map actually shortly thereafter I scraped off some of the original content and put Hereford there. You may also see evidence that Hereford Cathedral is faded as the map used to be available to the public. And this represents centuries of visitors pointing and touch one of the first you are here superimposed on the continents are drawings of the history of humankind and the marvels of the natural world. There are about 500 or so drawings, including 15 biblical events and 33 plants, animals, birds, strange creatures, 32 images of the people of the world and eight pictures of classical mythology. And these eight classical legends are including the Golden Fleece, a bear is quested for by Jason and the Argonauts. It's found drawn on the coast of the Black Sea. We have the famous Labyrinth of Crete, which bound the mythical Minotaur. It's depicted here on the 
vellum, it was a recognizable symbol of the Middle Ages, as labyrinths were laid out on the floor pavings of the cathedrals. And the winding pathways acted as spiritual pilgrimages for the faithful. The columns of Hercules are down at the bottom here, represented by the western edge of the known inhabited world. It's marked on the, the Strait of Gibraltar. Even the, the camp at Alexander the Great is illustrated here. And the legends of his heroic leader, popular with scholars at the time, Alexander's camp is, is shown with a bunch of tall tents. And a strong wall runs through his camp, which Alexander thought to have built to rebel and imprison the destructive evil of the sons of Cain. The area below this is attributed to a Scythian race, and as knowledge of the region was limited, the area is decorated with the dramatic and wild images. Jesus is found at the very top of the map, highlighting his significance and importance in the Christian faith. Along his right, which is the map's left, people travel from heaven, people travel from death into heaven, and on his left, the damned are chained and dragged off to hell, represented by what appears in a lot of medieval iconography, it's a mouth of hell. A beast's sharp teeth and glaring eyes. And hell was often represented as being, being eaten by a dragon. As far as in biblical stories, Garden of Eden, including Adam, a serpent, and Eve, it's found near the top. Eden is surrounded by fortifications and a ring of fire, signifying that it's now off limits to humanity. Another image over here shows the boat filled with creatures and a bearded man, representing the tale of Noah and his ark. Here, the largest building on the map, the five story city of Babylon. The topmost structure is the Tower of Babel. And the size of the drawing, as well as the details of the text on the map emphasize the arrogance and pride of the people who were said to build a tower so high that it might challenge God himself. In the, in the biblical legend, God's punishment ultimately caused humanity to speak in different languages. Here, depicting the travel route of the Israelites in the story of the Exodus, you can clearly see them cutting through the Red Sea. And then, here, sort of swirling or wandering through the desert. Perhaps that took them about 40 years. Now, many natural and unnatural creatures abound here on the map of Monday. Animals less well known to medieval Europeans, such as camels or elephants, are drawn with quite a bit of accuracy. For example, a camel with two humps is located south here. Bestiaries, or books of beasts, of the time describe camels as living for 100 years and only being able to drink muddy water. Elephants are drawn wearing constructed wooden towers, as the large animals were fitted with these fighting platforms for use in warfare by Indian and Persian soldiers. It 
was believed at this time that the elephants fear mice. Here the legendary unicorn is depicted as well. It's with its iconic single long horn. It's named Monoceros. The unicorn was often linked to Jesus. It was reputed to be long enough to battle elephants. But could be tamed by innocent and virtuous young maidens. Now there are various strange and wonderful people represented on the map, both real and unreal, likely due to exaggerated travel tales of dangerous foreign cultures. Now I guess we should, I should mention that real quick for the animals too. Keep in mind that travel was not easy back then. Those that did travel not usually travel that far. Pilgrimages were fairly common, but it's not like getting on a plane now. A lot of what people did learn was by word of mouth as well. So the depictions on the animal as well as the human side are still very impressive. So, here are the Blemai. In the Middle Ages, there were many traveler tales of Blemais. And the Blemais were reported to be a warlike race with no head, but their facial features in their chest. Alexander the Great was thought to have encountered the Blemais in his campaign. They're even mentioned in Shakespeare's Othello, one medieval writer says that, like lawyers who speak through their bellies. On the map of Monday here, there's one holding a spear and a shield, and he's located in Africa. Stories circulated about iPods or monoculi. Psyopods were reported to be a race of people with one very large foot that they used to shield themselves from the sun. And stories told how these strange people moved extremely quickly on their one leg. On this map there are two psyopods, one in India and the other one on the extreme south edge of the inhabited world. Mysteries and dangerous cave dwellers of the troglodytes are drawn in Africa on the map. Three of them are depicted in caves, and one rides as a strange goat beast. They appear to eat snakes and run around naked. The map text actually describes the troglodytes as very swift men who catch wild animals by jumping onto their backs thought to be an ancient group of people from African Red Sea coast, uh, described by Greek and Roman historians. These anecdotes eventually turned into mythical feats and wild characteristics. Created in the late 13th century by a team of scholars, but Mopamundi is attributed to a man named Richard of Aldingham and Lafford. The large map hung for years on the wall in the cathedral in Hereford. Usually for unusual for a medieval map, reference to the map maker Richard is noted in the bottom left corner, giving it a very human touch. It was written in Anglo-Norman and translated to English. It says, Let all who have had the 
this history, or shall hear, or read, or see it. Pray to Jesus in his divinity to have pity on Richard of Altingham and Lafford, who has made and planted, to whom joy in heaven be granted. The map was hidden away during times of political uncertainty and war, languishing under floorboards or forgotten in secret locations since about 1855 when it was cleaned and repaired by the British Museum. And now it sits in protective, bulletproof, UV protective glass and a display in the new library for Hereford. It survived 700 years, preserving and illustrating the fascinating and bizarre beliefs, knowledge, and tradi traditions of medieval Europe. It remains one of the most significant historical maps in the world, and the largest map of Mundi. I hope you enjoyed learning with me today. Forget to like and subscribe and please comment below. Let me know if there's something that you want to learn about. I'll see you in the study later.